Hello and welcome back to the Midlands Outdoor channel back with another video today. Here we are in Sedgley. We've got the beacon which is right on top of the hill over there. Some really fantastic views I believe when you get right to the top you can see just right away into the distance. I've always wanted to come down to here to come and check it out and Sedgley is full of history. But let's go and make our way to the top of the beacon and let's go and check it out. So uh, I believe the beacon is just right away here but the views as you get more higher up you can just see right away into the distance over there sort of but yeah drop it in the comments if you've ever been here before it's an absolute beautiful place but wow look at the view of the beacon right away here you can just see the style of it right away there going to the top and I believe it's a grade 2 listed structure I will come to the history in a little while so don't know how close you can get to it, but I know it's all fenced off. And there's a view of the beacon stretching all the way up. Wow, look at the view of that. And I think there is actually a date. If I come carefully around, I don't know if that says 18 something onto it. If I carefully zoom in, there's actually a little plaque there. Could be a date onto it. So what I'm going to do is get a bit of drone footage. We'll send it all the way up and we'll send it around the beacon and we'll tell you a bit of history behind it, which is really cool. This has been the site of a beacon for over 400 years, and as a tower was placed there before 1700. The present tower was erected in 1846, constructed from gold or sandstone. It stands on the crest of Beacon Hill itself, the highest ground in the manor, 777 feet, or 237 meters above sea level. It is 50 feet high and seven feet in diameter. The tower's original function and ownership are not clear. The popular story suggests astronomical use by Lord Rottersley, a well-known Staffordshire amateur astronomer. However, it is thought that a local landowner, Mr Pettit, erected the lookout as a folly in 1887 for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. A fire was lit in the brazier fixed to the top. I mean, you wouldn't really believe that there's a beacon sitting right away in Sedgley with some fantastic views going right away into the distance, parts of the Black Country and Wolverhampton. Definitely got to show you these in a second. But what we're standing on right away now used to be part of an old reservoir on the old Ordnance Survey maps because just by the side of me, there's multiple things sticking right away up and I'll quickly show you this one once more. I've just noticed onto the corner, we've got a couple of these sticking up. We've got one there, a couple on that corner, and also one to that end. And I believe this is actually a very old hatch, what went down, possibly to an old reservoir tunnel. But what's really impressive about this site here is the views overlooking parts of the Black Country. If I just carefully zoom in, you can just see parts of Wolverhampton, just in the far back area over there. And the impressive views, what keep going right into the distance, onto those further back areas. What I have just noticed, if I carefully zoom in, you might not be able to see it, but I've just actually spotted Turner's Hill sticking just about on that angle right away to the back. But I'll tell you what, what impressive views that is just into the distance. Could just sit here for hours and just enjoy it, imagining summertime, just coming for a little picnic here 
and just sitting back and enjoying the views. But that is actually definitely Wolverhampton, I believe, just right away over there. It's only three mile away from here, so it's actually not that far. But I'm really glad I've come to see the beacon. It's just absolutely so cool. The architecture is amazing. But you may have seen on the drone footage, there was a little plaque sticking out the wall. I do think that says 1800s, but we'll roll all the way back and go show the front entrance once more. But just before we go, I just want to give you one more view of the black country right away in the distance. Look at that. So right, as we get a bit more closer, check out the views of that. I do believe the inside stairs of the beacon was actually demolished, but I've heard a few people back in the old days did try and get right away to the top and they actually managed it. I've got a group on Facebook called Exploring the Black Country and some people actually posted a comment in there, which was really cool. So thank you very much for sharing that story. But it does say here, in August 1588, there would have been a beacon lit right away here before all this one was actually built to actually signal the arrival of the Spanish Armada. Well, I mean, this area has a lot of history. You can imagine how far it really does date back. If I carefully view, you can just see the front door entrance right away there. Cool architecture of a little arch, if I zoom in, just right away above the door. You can just see the very small windows as I pan further up. And then you can just see the front entrance right away there. Very, very old gate. So I believe you would have gone through the gate and walked all the way around the back from that back entrance up to there. But I did mention at the start a very old date, possibly dating to the 1800s. I think it says something built, 18 something. It might be rebuilt. But you can imagine the original beacon being right away here to signal the Spanish Armada. And this one actually used to study the stars in the sky. But I tell you what, really impressive. I've enjoyed looking at that. But the land stretches even further down. And I think there's even more history over here. So we will get the old Ordnance Survey maps out and check out what was here back in the past. So the land right away in front was very well industrialised back in the Black Country days because according to the old Ordnance Survey maps, there used to be very old clay pits just right away down the back. There used to be lime kilns right away in front and a massive quarry stretching further to the back called Beacon Hill Quarry. But you can just definitely tell this land was well industrialised because the ground is completely uneven as you go further down. It goes down in the slope and it goes further back up. Well, I believe then it goes further back down. So the quarry used to be situated where we're heading right away over there. Down into the dips, I think there's all housing estates there now. It used to be all the old clay pits. But you can just even see there's more evidence of things that was over here because this is pretty cool. You can just see a massive brick circle and then something right away here. So drop this in the comments of what you think this possibly was. I've just noticed this from the footpath right away there. Further down, you can just definitely tell it was actually a quarry because of all the bricks sticking out the footpath. As we journey further down, I can just see even more rocks sticking right away up. As we journey further down into the old quarry section, we can definitely see some very spectacular views of the black country and the surrounding area. But what's really impressive is the landscape giving evidence of that old industrial past. So right, I believe this is the area where Beacon Hill Quarry was actually situated, right around this land, going down the banks, down the back. It is really tall up and the views going to the distance are really impressive. Check out these. So unlock the centre of the beacon park right away down the back where the views just overlook this area. So we can just see Birmingham as we come further to the back of this corner and stretching all the way around. The views here are absolutely breathtaking. You can just see really, really far into the distance and then the further back areas over there. But I tell you what, this place is really impressive for the views. It's really stunning. It's actually going to be one of my favourite places for the viewpoints at the moment. From all the places what I've visited in the black country, this has got to be a first favourite now. Wow. It's just really mind blowing how far you can just really see.
But I mean, just right away over there, you can even see parts of Sedgley. The big church sticking right away up and the little town just right away to the back. There's even down there, stretching all the way down the big cemetery. And then overviewing further back onto this corner, there's so much industry. You can just see all the factories right away there. All the hours and the states stretching right away to the back where all the old clay pits used to be back in the Black Country days. But where I'm going to head to now is all the way down the back over there. Let's go and see what more evidence we can see of the very old quarry itself. So right here we are and this is the further back end of the quarry stretching all the way down. So this is all this land here what you can see now is Beacon Hill Quarry. But if I carefully zoom in you can just see where they cut many years ago with a little valley going right away down into the distance and where the banks are there is a massive steep drop and that is actually where we're heading. But just before we do you can just see Baggeridge the big massive uh, stack sticking right away up from the old brickworks just right away there Ooh. but I just really want to get off this hill now it is absolutely really bad with the wind and it's even going through my hat it's so cold but like the wren's nest and like the other places where the Dudley caverns are this is also sort of similar I don't think there was any caves here but they actually dug from the top of the land digging out for limestone because it does mention about lime kilns being on the further back area here it's just a rough guess of what the possibly quarried but i'm guessing it possibly was limestone so right there is an information board here but it doesn't mention about the quarry all this area what surrounds is called a black country geopark and we can just see a map here just onto the corner mention all the different geoparks you can visit we're on site number eight sedgia beacon it says there the beacon and Beacon Hill quarries. So it does mention here, I've actually googled that Black Country Geopark and it's caught with a bit of information about this being a geosite. It actually says Beacon Hill in Sedgley is an important geosite for its exposures of a fossiliferous a Silurian Amistry limestone strata of approximately 420 million years in age and its commanding views across the southern Black Country and to the west to the hills of Shropshire and Wales. It has a significant contrast in its fossils to those of nearby Wren's Nest Nature Reserve. The Beacon site is one of the chain of hills that lit fires to signal the arrival of the Spanish Armada at the shores of England during the Elizabethan times. It also contains a notable landmark structure, the Sedgy Beacon, a Victorian tower constructed under the orders of Lord Rottersley and said to be his tower for observing the night sky. But you can just definitely tell the evidence of this being a quarry stretching all the way down. It sort of does remind me of the wren's nest. When you look down where all the caverns were sort of dug, you can just see the little valley sticking right away to the bottom. And that's actually giving evidence that this was actually quarried for limestone back in those old days. And that actually stretches all the way down there snaking into another valley where you can just see the little hills sticking right away to the back. It would be interesting to know more information behind what was actually here. Was there actually caverns under the ground or was it actually dug from the surface? But for me I believe it possibly was the surface but the lime kilns were only right away there just to the back. As we journey further around Beacon Hill you can just sort of see the evidence from the old quarry with all the little hills sticking right away out and the steep hills leading right away back to the top. It is a very impressive site and it is definitely important for the geological features what possibly might hide here into Sedgy Beacon. 
So I have found evidence from the old quarry. If we just look right away to the bottom, you can just see all the brick sticking right away out. It's absolutely so much of it. It's all buried beneath the soil. But you can just see more evidence just right away there. Just imagine the amount of fossils, what possibly could hide all underneath this. But all this limestone, what's stretching all the way to the bottom, is just so much of it. But if you paid careful attention and looked into detail, you definitely would find those fossils from that geological past. It is a really interesting site. But I mean, you could just view further all the way down to the bottom and walk the further back bits. But I'm going to go all the way back up. Let's get back to the viewpoint. But before we do that, I just want to see what's further to the bottom. Because I have heard there is a nice country walk what goes even further on to the back areas of Pem. So right, just coming off Beacon Hill sort of, we're heading all the way down to the bottom. The land what stretches all the way down the back with the big fields is called Pen. And I think there's tons of stuff over there. You've got Pen Common, you've got Upper Pen, and all the surrounding land right away to the back. I do believe the, the railway, I think it's the South Staffordshire Railway Walk, come somewhere further over the back that way so that is actually one that I haven't covered yet and I've definitely got to go and do it but you can just see the further we head down the more the views are sort of dropping now because we're coming right away to the lower ground but I'll tell you what that was really awesome I really enjoyed exploring Beacon Hill but let's go and see what the last part of this video has got to offer is there anything to see right away down to the bottom here oh wow I've just come across this just found a massive vast land full of pine trees sticking all the way up. Pinus. There's tons of them. I mean, these look like they've been here for many years. They're really old. And you see all the old trees stretching all the way down. And the big ones just right away there. I do love collecting these, actually. Pine cones. I mean, I keep these because they're nice to put in your garden. You can actually grow these, but it depends on the type of... Uh, seeds that have dropped it has to be the newer ones because i think with these pine cones if you did try and grow one i think it's from december to around now when they start dropping and if you get the right seed you can actually grow them but by looking a little bit i can't see any baby pine trees but there's a load of old pine cones just scattered all the way across the floor but these trees are just really so old so right that's the end of that pine walk we're coming back out to the open field. So I think where we need to head to is just further down this way, straight away in front. So right, it's took me a little bit further down from where that pine section was. You can just see the views right away in front again once more. We're coming closer to Wolverhampton. We've got a main busy road just right away to the back. And I think this path leads out to the back of a petrol station. And I think you can get to the further back fields just right away over there. Let's go check it out. So right, I think I've made it. That's actually Wolverhampton Road, the busy one going all the way to the bottom. Come across a road now called Northway. And the country path where we're taking should just be on the right. So right, saying go this way, public footpath. Ah, here we go. So it's actually now brought us onto the, the fields where the back area of Penn is. So I believe if you kept walking that way, it will definitely take you to Penn. But I just want to see what this land is like altogether. I've never done it. But a bloke that I've seen in Cotwell End told me to come down and have a nice walk down here. But wow. Look at the views of this now coming all the way out from the Beacon Hill into the countryside. I bet you could just keep on walking and walking as it goes really far. So it does sort of come out the black country the further you walk that way. Right, I've just done a bit of research and I'll tell you what, it is actually quite interesting to know what was over here because back to the old Ordnance Survey maps we can just see something here saying Park Hill, Old Quarry and if we journey further up it says Sedgley Park Colliery disused and further down that way a ton of rifle ranges just at the further back corner. So all this land on this corner was actually part of a quarry once more. So you can just see all the new houses what have been thrown up and all the way down to this further back. Wow, stunning views. Can just see again a little bit more clearly the Baggeridge stack. So it is not actually that far. So you could actually walk from Baggeridge from here 
then go all the way to Himley Hall, then all the way back that way. But today I'm not going to do that, I'm going to go all the way through Beacon Hill. If the wind does stop, I might get a bit more drone footage just up to there. But if I just pan around to show you once more, you can just see the baggage stack again. But it reminds me of my local one, the Lutley Fields. It just feels the same. I tell you what, if I was lost for time, I could just keep walking this. But I'd probably end up getting stranded because I'd end up even further out the black country. <laughs> I've got a long way to go. Two buses back home. Ah, so there is a footpath going on that corner. So we've got a local just walking up it. I will take you down there because I've just noticed something interesting on the old Ordnance Survey maps to do with Connery. Let's go and take a look. So right, I've just noticed there is a path going this way, so it does give you a little bit more clear view of the houses that are right away over there. So I don't believe that is actually the farm, but by viewing of it, it actually does say Sedgley Park. But if I just carefully zoom in, you can just see the very old buildings right away to the back. All that land there is Sedgley Park, just into the distance. The farm, according to the old Ordnance Survey maps, used to be on top of where the housing estate is, just further on. And a little bit more further to the side of it was something called Old Coal Shaft that it says trial onto it. So maybe those digging for coal just to test if there's any there and they maybe have give up on the mine. So it says trial colliery. But there's a lot of interesting stuff around here. But as you can just see, you can just keep on journeying even further into the countryside and keep on going out the black country. But the weather today, wow, it's just absolutely horrible with the wind and really cold. But yeah, I'm going to get some nice views of Beacon Hill again. So I'm going to head all the way back that way to go all the way home. I've got the two buses to catch back to Hell's Owen. But it has been a journey. I've really enjoyed it. So I think in the next part, what I'm going to do is come all the way back down this way for the nice walk and check out what's even further down there because you can just keep on going. So this is actually a potential summer video. Just heading further into Penn and I might even go to the further back end of Wolverhampton as it would be easy to catch a bus back from there once more but what a journey let's go and head all the way back to Beacon Hill let's go and get you some nice views once more so it has been a fantastic visit I've really enjoyed coming down to part of the black country where I've never been before looking at Sedgwick Beacon and all the way down the back of Beacon Hill then into the countryside but as we journey further back up, you can just see the stunning views overlooking parts of the black country and furthermore. But there is a lot of history to discover here from the geological past and also from the beacon and history of Sedgley itself. But we will definitely come back down to this part of the black country and cover more history into the Sedgley area and maybe even further down into Penn and discover furthermore. Well, thank you very much for watching Exploring the Black Country and I'll see you again soon for some more fantastic episodes. So, right, due to the wind, I'm not going to take my drone back up. You can just hear it's gone absolutely windy again. So I think I might return to this place to do a bit more drone footage around the back areas. But yeah, I think it's going to rain as well. You can just see the clouds right away into the distance. It's gone really dark. But let's get some more nice views and let's, go, let's get out of the Beacon Hill.